Now, one particularly poignant scene in this novel uh, that takes place between two characters on the topic of, uh, of suicide, partially, uh, is between uh, one Stepanovich and this philosophical madman, uh, Kirillov. And Stepanovich is returning to his apartment or flat or whatever, and he's attempting to convince him to commit suicide, or rather to convince him that to, to convince Kirillov that uh, his suicide isn't is is not uh, coerced at all, because uh, uh, for, for for this character uh, Kirillov, um, his being a tr completely absolutely free agent is his highest aim. Uh, he can't conceive of for a second that he is not a completely free being, and he conceives, of course, of the world without uh, real meaning or order, and uh, without without God. And for him, uh, to to kill oneself is the ultimate act of affirming one's will, of becoming uh, self-willed. For Kirillov, uh, if there is no God, and you are in absolute uh, command of your existence at all times, then the ultimate act of asserting that will, uh, the most powerful act you, 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 you can uh, showcase is to kill yourself. There's one passage I'd like to just read briefly which, in which Kirillov sort of summarizes his position. Stepanovich and him have been having uh, this back and forth argument on the topic and he, he, lou he lashes out at Stepanovich for, for a moment when he says, Hold your tongue, you won't understand anything. If there is no God, then I am God. Uh, to which Stepanovich says, There, I could never understand that point of yours. Why are you God? If, and to which uh, Kirillov uh, responds, If God exists, all is his will, and from his will I cannot escape. If not, all is my will, and I am bound to show self-will. Self-will? But why are you bound? Because all will has become mine. Can it be that no one in the whole planet, after making an end of God and believing in his own will, will dare express his self-will on the most vital point? Like a beggar inheriting a fortune and being afraid of it and not daring to approach the bag of gold, thinking himself too weak to own it. I want to manifest my self-will. I may be the only one, but I'll do it. Do it, by all means. I am bound to shoot myself because the highest point of my self-will is to kill myself with my own hands. So there you are. For Kirillov, uh, juxtaposed to Camus, suicide is the ultimate affirmation of his power over his own life, of his power to end his own life whenever he so pleases. He discusses also, uh, Stepanovich brings up the question of whether, uh, well, brings up the idea that people kill themselves constantly, but uh, Kirillov retorts that that's for good cause. He, he will be the first person in history to kill himself with no cause whatsoever, simply to show that he is bound by no will but his own, and that by uh, killing himself, he has shown himself to be purely self-willed. And I, I, I thought that was a very, very poignant point. Uh, I, I don't have um, a particularly uh, I guess I, I, I'm torn between Camus and Dostoevsky, or Dostoevsky, Dostoevsky's character uh, on this point, but I, I, I don't have a, a firm uh, stand to side on. Uh, but I, I, uh, I would like to bring up uh, one other point about suicide from the perspective of uh, the artist, uh, the painter, the poet, the, the musician, uh, that's that sort of thing, and suicide as an aesthetic expression. Now, when I say aesthetic expression, I have in mind this uh, idea of the this archetype of the the starving artist who, without any recognition in the world, uh, kills himself uh, in hopes that after his death, his art will become uh, internationally renowned, respected, and be inspirational for uh, an infinite amount of generations to come. Uh, but sir, but, he, but he'll never live to see it. Uh, he can only uh, abandon the world which has abandoned him in hopes that uh, perhaps partially through this action, this uh, uh, noble, selfless action of killing himself for his art, his art will in, in turn uh, become recognized where formerly he, he was not. And I said 
uh, as as an uh, well, I think yeah. When, when when I'm thinking of this, I'm thinking of someone uh, such as uh, Van Gogh, uh, you know, the great post-impressionist painter, the greatest post-impressionist uh, painter uh, in history, who famously sold, I believe, only a, one single painting his entire life, and went on to shoot himself, and within months or a few years at the most, became one of the highest-selling artists uh, in in the art in the art in the art business at the time. Uh, other other uh, similar uh, individuals like Thomas Chatterton, uh, the the teenage poet who uh, committed suicide by taking arsenic, and became and after with you know who was at the time living I, I think in an attic uh, somewhere uh, and literally starving to death because he had no uh, money or resources, and after his death he became seen as uh, the perhaps the first precursor to the English Romantic movement in poetry, and people like John Keats um, dedicated uh, several of their uh, poetic works to him. Uh, but this is, this is the sort of archetype I have in mind of the artist who literally dies for their art, uh, the artist who is more concerned with the preservation of their art after their own death than their own life. Um, I said that suicide as an ethical act uh, is one of the chief self-indulgences. Uh, however, as an aesthetic act, uh, I don't think there is a single action more selfless.